So, the Battlefield 1 trailer was revealed several days ago on 6th of May, confirming the rumors that were roaming around Battlefield being a World War 1 game. Many had their doubts about World War 1 themed settings, including me, and the arguments against this path mostly revolved around weapons, vehicles and where the battles were to be established. The community was not too convinced that the era if picked would be interesting or has enough diversity to keep us playing. So what to expect from this era then? And this is what I will be unraveling today. Make sure to stick around because I will be covering a lot of interesting things we know and things that also might be in the game. I will be going into some details since important questions were sort of answered in the trailer but even better covered when the developers started talking about the game. So it seems we were all caught off guard and I most certainly did not expect what they delivered. Of course, it's too soon to speak, but I'm sure after reading about World War I and hearing what the developers had to say, we will not be disappointed, and it shapes up to be an interesting title. As one of the DICE lead designers Danny Berlin said in one of his interviews, there's a common misconception that World War I was just fought with muskets, but it wasn't. It was a time of new weapons, bolt-action rifles, automatic rifles and semi-automatic rifles. The freedom we have is massive. And I have to admit, after digging, there are a lot of interesting things that happened in World War I that did put the Brickstone Foundation for future weaponry and warfare. And if you're wondering what locations we might be visiting, to cut corners short, World War I had many countries involved. The camp was split to two sides, the Allies and the Central Power. The Allies consist of some major players like the British Empire, United States, Russia, France, Italy and several others. And on the other side of the camp, the central power consisted of Germany, Austro-Hungarians, Bulgaria and Turkey. The list goes on with numerous more countries involved in the war and I just won't be covering all of them. But the idea is that there's a lot of content and interesting places we might be visiting, including as seen in the trailer, some Middle Eastern locations. So, what locations and settings do we already know and what fronts and battles we'll be fighting in? Well, we have some confirmed locations. France is an obvious one, as also seen in the trailer. There are plenty of trenches and a good variety of terrain. Some trenches seem to indicate that the possible setting is in Verdun, which is highly likely since it's one of the most important battles in World War I. It would seem a little odd not to include this very important battle, but they might choose not to since it might seem for them a little redundant. But that is a subject for another day. The developers also confirmed that one of their settings will be the Italian Alps. The Italian Front was a series of battles that bordered between Austria and Italy. The Allied Army on this front consisted mostly of Italians, counting at 58 divisions, which is roughly 700,000 men. The battle against Austro-Hungarian and German forces at those high altitudes was extremely hard and the overall death count was almost at 2.5 million in total. And moving on, we reach Belgium and the Argonne Forest, a very important battle as well in World War I, where the Allied offense brought the war to an end and the casualties reached hundreds and thousands of dead. And finally, from what the developers revealed and seen in the trailer, the very exotic location is Saudi Arabia. Yes, the battle extended further than Europe and Saudi Arabia did play a role in this war. Also, the character riding the horse in one of the scenes in the trailer is apparently a Bedouin woman warrior, which will be one of the playable characters. And the Battlefield 1 Early and Lister Deluxe Edition contains Lawrence of Arabia pack, which heavily hints that there will be gameplay revolving around the revolt in the Middle East against the Ottoman Empire. And if anybody's wondering, Thomas Edward Lawrence, aka also known as Lawrence of Arabia, was a British officer who contributed in the victory over the Ottoman Empire and gained mythical reputation among the Arabic people. There is also a movie under the same name played by Peter O'Toole and Omar Sharif. It's a good movie, I highly recommend you take a look at it. So, all of it is very interesting and not unexpected since the developers emphasized on how the team wanted to bring the lesser known elements of World War I to the spotlight. Now these are the locations that were to the most part confirmed, but it leaves a lot to speculate whether there are more locations to expect, and I'm sure there might be. There are several other major battles in World War I apart from Battle of Verdun. Battle of Marne is one of them, and Battle of Ypres, Somme and Cambrai are all potential set locations due to their importance in the war. Apologies if mispronounced. However, I'm entering murky waters and these are just my personal speculations. 
Now that we have sorted to a certain extent the potential geographical locations of the game, let's dig into the nitty gritty stuff that Battlefield 1 introduced with its weapons and vehicles. Well, as it seems, World War I had a plethora of weapons and vehicles to choose from. Of course, they did not stack up to the modern arsenal and variety, but it's more than enough to cover a wide range. Now I have to admit that some of the vehicles look dorky, but we probably won't get all of them since most of them really did look very silly and were not all that useful. I mean, what developer would want people to drive around in a supposed serious setting like war and giggle all the way because the tank he's driving is goofy looking? Besides, some of the tanks don't look that bad at all. So, starting off, tanks will be split into classes, like heavy tank, light and medium, which indicates that you would need to choose whether you want a tank that goes fast, but can get destroyed fairly easy, or you want a much tougher one, but more prone to be an easy target practice. Also, there will be two more classes added to the game and one removed. Engineer has been dropped and the two new classes are tanker and pilot. And judging by what senior producer Alex Grondel said, the primary weapon of these classes would be their own vehicles, so there is a chance that you won't be able to hop in and out, and as a good captain you go down with the ship, if you're killed. So no more abandoning a perfectly good vehicle for a sniper position. Now these classes might give us a good hint of what tanks might be in the game, since we already know that the British Mark tank and FT Renault are both confirmed. The Mark tank weighs at around 28 tons, which gives it a status of a heavy tank, and the Renault FT tank was at 6.5 tons only, which made it a very light and versatile tank on the battlefield. By the way, both the Mark and FT tank were heavily used by many Allied forces during the war, so there is a high possibility that several nations could have these tanks or some of the variants in their disposal in the game. So what is missing is the middle ground, the medium tank, and from what I saw, the best tank that kind of fits this range is the medium Mark C or Mark B tank. Both were at around 20 tons and kind of fit this niche nicely. One can argue though that these tanks mostly carried machine guns, but I don't think it would be much of a challenge to change them to tank cannons. On the opposite side, things are simpler, since the Central Power did not have many tanks and only later in the war started producing them. The Germans during the war managed to capture the British Mark tank and create their own, the A7VU, which looked very similar to its British father, the Mark tank. The A7VU was a 39-ton tank, that is I think a good opponent to the British Mark IV tank. Moving on to the medium tank, the best tank that fits this role is a Sturmpanzerwagen Oberschlesen. I might be butchering the name, but it fits the medium tank range perfectly with its 90 ton weight and 16 km per hour speed. And finally going down the road we reach the light tank, and this one might be the German LK2 tank that weighed almost exactly as the French Renault tank and had the same speed, however it was released to the end of the war and did not gain much credit. An interesting side note, the German's army by war's end was made up largely by captured British and French tank. The A7V German tank is confirmed as well, another very heavy tank that stacks up at 33 tons. Possibly this might be the rival of the British MK tank instead of the A7VU. Although I don't know if this behemoth of a tank would be very interesting in the multiplayer. I mean, the tank is a big box. And finally we reach the jeeps, that are also going to be in the game. As seen in one of the concept arts, the jeep is none other than the Rolls Royce armored car for the British force. And the only equivalent I could find that could match this car for the central power was the German Erhard EV4. Again, my apologies if I mispronounced. Oh, and an interesting thing is that you also can ride horses in this game. Which is not very strange as World War I was at the dawn of modernization, so mixed warfare was still going on. An interesting sight to be seen charging to battle on horses against tanks. I'm sure there will be a lot of trolling and lols around this. So apparently, now you can bring a horse to a tank fight. And for the final machine, the armor train as seen in the trailer is none other than the Orlik, a Russian armored train. Interesting to see if this will be in the multiplayer. 
And that wraps it up for the land vehicles and mammals that I managed to scrap. So now we continue to the aircrafts, potential artillery, ships and naval battles if there will be any. The artillery might play the same role as field pickups in Battlefield 2 that gave the player the option to call in for artillery. The Morser 16 as seen in the trailer might do just that, maybe even the battleships will fill in this role. Now from this point on we will dissect the trailer and talk about each aircraft and gun that we see. The first plane you see in the trailer is none other than the British Bristol F-2B, two-seated plane used for both dogfights and reconnaissance. The second plane I managed to identify was fairly easy. It was the three-winged single-seated Fokker DR-1 and it was a very popular plane at the time, also used by Albrecht Freyer, also known as the Red Baron, regarded as a national hero in Germany and respected by his enemies. The plane in the concept art was the Sopwith Camel, a British fighter widely used at the time and credited with shooting down 1,294 enemy aircraft. Very difficult to use but offers superior maneuverability to an experienced pilot. And finally, we reach the Zeppelin in the trailer. Unfortunately, I don't know which model it is. There were several Zeppelin. The Zeppelin L32, L52, L10 and Zeppelin Z12 are just a couple I managed to find. And most of them were in use by the German Empire. And this is all for the aerial vehicles. I am sure that I missed a couple in the trailer, but the sheer amount of aerial vehicles and their variants were too overwhelming to dig through. Just digging through these took a lot of time. Besides, the video passes by so fast that it's extremely blurry and hard to identify them. Now, before we proceed to the weapons, a little talk about the classes that are going to be in the game and the changes that followed. As already mentioned, the engineer has been ditched and instead we got two new ones for vehicle use only. But for the infantry, we have the classic basic classes, the assault, medic, scout and support. The changes to the classes are that the assault class will no longer have the ability to revive, like in Battlefield 3 and 4. This will be purely the medic's ability. The assault will take place of the engineer and will carry explosive, anti-tank mines and other weaponry. While the support class will keep his spot as the player with LMG and ammo crates. There is also a chance that the support class will call an artillery as previously hinted, but this is not fully confirmed. And last but not least, sniper or scout. This class will probably keep his identity as well without any changes. Now without further ado, let's step into the arsenal these classes might wield. Again, everything that I'm going to list is from the trailer, so to the most part it is confirmed. So right from the start of the trailer we see a German soldier wielding a trench mace that is indicating to a very rich melee mechanic in this game. Seems that the developers focused more on hand-to-hand -hand combat compared to the previous titles in the franchise. The fight occurs on no man's land and the poor British soldier is carrying what seems to be an anti-tank grenade, which might also hint that he is an assault class. Moving on a little further, we see a Bedouin woman warrior to be wielding a German cavalry sword. I initially thought it was a traditional Arabic sword, but they are thicker at the end. After that, we jump to the fighter Bristol F2B plane that seems to be having a Lewis gun mounted, which might hint to some very interesting dogfights. Moving on, we reach this shot, where we see a gun to the corner right, which is an MG08 machine gun, or any of its variants. Then we jump to a shot where another German soldier is wielding a shovel, probably another melee weapon. He is hitting what seems to be another British soldier in the heat of battle. And as the soldier is falling, we spot a Winchester 1897 trench shotgun, or what seems as one. The hilt of the gun is a little different, maybe indicating to an attachment, which will most definitely be in the game. Also, if you pay attention, the German soldier looks to have crutches in his backpack. I'm guessing he's a medic class. After that, we jump to the mentioned earlier Fokker DR1 plane with what seems to be another MG08, or some of its variants. It's hard to tell exactly what model it is, but I lean towards MG08 from all the pictures I gathered of DR1 planes. Then we jump to the soldier running beside the tank. This one was easy. It's a Tiguer anti-tank rifle. This gun kicks like a mule and probably held by an assault class. Maybe it's a pickup like in Battlefield 4. My guess is as good as yours. 
Then we skip to the scene where we see a person firing a pistol and what it seems to be a 1911 pistol. The profile of the gun is very recognizable, so I lean towards it being 1911. After that, we jump to the forest map and the soldier seems to handle another Lewis gun. As it seems, this gun was very versatile and used in many situations. My guess is, this is a support class weapon since it's an LMG. And at the same time, we see mustard gas blowing in the background. Unfortunately, I could not tell what weapon it is to the left, it's too blurry for me to tell. Then, we skip to this armored soldier. Now, this was actually a thing in World War I, so presumably it might be used by support classes as armor. Also, he is carrying an LMG that looks like another MG-08. And immediately after that, we jump to these soldiers being killed. And this one I was searching online, and there seems to be a debate between what weapon it is. I read somewhere it might be a Mauser Car 98Z, but from the picture I found it does not look too similar. Uh, I'm hesitant to say if it is. And so we reach the trenches and we see what seems to be a Mark III rifle and a bayonet attached to it, again indicating to the variety of melee weapons. Also the bayonet will be a charge attack. And then we skip to the flamethrower. This one was easy since the distinct round shape was very hard to miss. It's an egg pack, a near copy of the German Wex flamethrower. Afterwards we skip to the artillery and as already said these are the Morsa 16 artillery cannons. Then we get a glimpse of an explosion and a rifle with a side mounted scope. And this is a Gewehr 98. I recognized it pretty fast, but I could not identify it. Had to actually jump into some World War II games and search it from there. The World War II analog of this gun was the Gewehr 43, so I went a couple of steps back and found the World War I weapon. And finally, we reach the promo art that shows an American Harlem fighter soldier. Again, as mentioned earlier, EA decided to focus on less known elements of World War I, and this certainly is one of them. The Harlem Hellfighters were an infantry unit in World War I who spent more time in combat than any other American unit. And the weapon this soldier is holding is none other than the Mauser C-96, and on his side we see an MP-18 SMG. And for the final subject I say that there will be a lot more destructibility than in the previous two Battlefield games. The developers did hear the community and they will probably return to the Bad Company 2 routes with rich destruction mechanics. And this, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much wraps it up. Oh boy, this was a very long video. Unfortunately, I could not identify all of the planes and some of the weapons, and also this battleship as well. I did try my best, but I could not make out much. But anyway guys, I hope this video was informative to you as it was for me, and I will be leaving all the links in the description down below for you to check them out yourselves. I will also be leaving links where you can sign up for the open base that will hopefully come out very soon. Anyway guys, thanks for watching if you managed to stay till the end. I hope you liked it, please share if you found this interesting. This has been your host, Cy Gaming, and guys, stay awesome.